Hey everyone, this is Jenny from Homestead Corner. And today we're making sweet and sour chicken in the slow cooker. There are quite a bit of ingredients in this recipe, but the slow cooker really makes this quite simple to do. And it really doesn't take that much on hands work time. So today we are going to be using a little bit of ground ginger. I don't have any fresh. Fresh ginger is wonderful in this. A little chili powder, some a can of pineapple, some I'm using chai vinegar, chai blossom vinegar that I made. You can use white distilled vinegar in this if you don't have chai blossom vinegar, but I really love the flavor from the chai blossoms. And some low sodium soy sauce. Wish to share sauce. Uh, between, I have two pounds of chicken here, but a pound and a half to two pounds of chicken is perfect for this. You can use, I'm using chicken tenders because they're pretty inexpensive at our butcher shop. And, or you can use breast meat, you can use the boneless, skinless thighs, whatever you want. Boneless, skinless chicken of whatever kind works for this. A couple of medium-sized carrots, three bell peppers. I like to do three different colors. Um, if you have two red, one orange, or two yellow and one red, it, it's okay either way. It doesn't, doesn't really matter what color they are, but about three peppers. Uh, a medium-sized onion, some raw honey, uh, cornstarch, and garlic. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I always do when I'm cooking in the slow cooker is put the put it up on high the slow cooker and get it heated up. These take a really long time to heat up usually. So I just usually turn it on high while I'm cutting everything up and getting it ready. That way the pot is heated up and it helps it a little bit. So then I'm just going to take my chicken and you want you can use whole pieces for this. Um, you don't have to cut it up yet because you're going to take it out a little bit at the end anyway. So I just put the whole pieces right in, whether it's breasts, thighs, tenders, whatever you have. And I'm just going to layer these right in the bottom, kind of cover the bottom with the chicken. And a pound and a half is what the recipe called for, but I've done this a few times with two pounds because I got it out and it's thawed, so... We might as well cook it up, and this is just delicious. So I have got my chicken all in there. Then I have cut my carrots in just nice thin slices, so they're like little coins, and just nice and thin, as small as you can get them. You want everything to cook up kind of evenly, and carrots take a little while to cook, so I cut them really nice and thin, and they're nice bite-sized pieces. And I'm just going to sprinkle these right on top of my chicken. And I've also cut up my bell peppers and onion into about one inch pieces. You don't need them real small. This way everything cooks the same amount of time. So I'm just going to put those right in with it also. And these chunks of onion will break up as it's cooking. I don't worry too much about breaking those up. Because you don't have to. It's all good. They'll come apart, I promise. All right, so I'm going to put my cover on here, and we'll start making the sauce. For the sauce, we're going to start with a quarter cup of low-sodium um, soy sauce. We want to... Uh, the, you can use the regular soy sauce, but I like the low-sodium. I just find that it's too salty. And then three cloves of garlic, all minced up. I'll put that right in there. I found these cute little measuring cups and I thought they were just adorable for the holidays and my kids love this stuff and me too it's the holidays are coming and then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of ground ginger and I found these little measuring spoons too I had to oh my god they're ridiculous but you know I like it so we want about a teaspoon of ground ginger. If you have fresh ginger, that is wonderful in here too. I put like a one inch piece minced, all grated up. 
and uh, and then about a half a teaspoon of chili powder. This I'm using hot chili powder because I like it to have a little zap in it, but any chili powder works. Or if you have chili paste, you could use some of that. So we have that. Then we're going to add about a tablespoon of our chai vinegar. And white, this calls for white vinegar, but I really love this chai vinegar in here. So um, I use that. And we make that in the spring. I just love chai blossom vinegar. It makes such good dressings and stuff. And then we're going to add about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This makes everything taste yummy. Two tablespoons. I don't know if I said teaspoons or tablespoons. I meant tablespoons. And then about two tablespoons of our honey. If you can get lo raw local honey, that is the best stuff. The, if you gotta buy store stuff, it works. But we love raw honey. All right, once we have this all mixed, I am just gonna take this and pour it right over the top of my vegetables and chicken. We're gonna put that right in there. And now we are going to let this cook. We're just gonna let it go. I leave it on high, and this is gonna be done in about four hours. You can do this on low. We're gonna come back to this in about two and a half to three hours and check. Once our chicken's cooked, we're gonna pull it out and continue on. But, right now we just want to let it cook on high you want to let it cook about two and a half hours but if you're cooking this on low you can let it go for three and a half four and a half hours you just want to make sure that chicken is cooked all the way through you can use a thermometer to check to make sure it hits 160 degrees in the center or you can just pull a piece apart and make sure it's cooked is what i do because the thermometer is just extra stuff to clean and we're gonna let this cook. I'll bring you back. This has been cooking for about two and a half hours and everything is looking really, really good. And it smells delicious. So I just pulled out one piece and I just like to cut it all the way through so I am sure that it is cooked. If you have a thermometer, you could definitely check it. You wanna make sure the internal temperature of the chicken is 160 degrees. But I am just going to take my chicken pieces out and we're going to get this sauce thickened up before we put our chicken back in. Okay, so once I have all my chicken out of the pot, I'm just taking a quarter cup of pineapple juice from our can. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch to this and this is just gonna thicken it up so it's nice and thick we're just gonna make like a little slurry with this pineapple juice and it gets really funky in there you know how cornstarch is when it hits liquid it's a little weird so we're just gonna get this all mixed up And I am going to pour this right into the crock pot. And we're going to let this cook for about 30 minutes to let this thicken up. Give it a little stir. Get everything moved around in there. And we're going to let this stay on high for about 30 minutes. So while that is thickening up in our slow cooker, I can my own pineapple so the chunks are kind of big I like them a little bit smaller like bite size for this recipe so I'm just gonna cut these down so they're the size that I like and I like everything to be kind of bite-sized when we're ready to serve this baby so I'm just gonna trim them up a little bit and if you buy canned pineapple from the store if it's too big you can cut it up it's really whatever size you like. You want to go 
with that. So I've got this all cut up. You only need an eight ounce can of pineapple for this recipe. I like a little more pineapple in it, so we use a 16 ounce jar um, of pineapple that we can. So that's what we have. And I could use half of it, but I like a lot of pineapple in this because it's tasty and delicious. So we add a little extra, but you could get a little eight ounce can. You can even use crushed in this. You just wanna make sure you have that quarter cup of juice so you can make your slurry and get that in there. And now we've got our pineapple all done, so I am going to just cut my chicken up into bite-sized pieces. You can shred it, you can do it any way you like. It really, it's up to you, it's whatever you like. Shredded, cut, I like it. It kind of shreds on its own anyway, but I like it in little chunks, so. We try okay, to cut so it. once we have this all thickened, you can see after about 25 30 minutes, this is a nice, thick, delicious sweet and sour sauce. So, we are going to grab our pineapple and we're going to put that right in there. Our little pineapple chunks, and we're also going to return our chicken. And it doesn't take that long the chicken's still pretty warm but so I just cover everything on the counter you can throw it in the fridge um, just takes a little more time to heat it back up but these are still pretty warm so I'm just putting my chicken back in and then we're gonna give this a really good mix So everything is all mixed together and we've got that sauce all over everything. Oh my goodness. I have to tell you, I cannot wait to eat. I'm hungry and this smells delicious. This is definitely a favorite. We love this. And it's nice that it just cooks on its own in the crock pot. So I'm gonna cover this back over and while everything is heating up, I'm just going to put on a little bit of rice because I like to serve it over rice. So I just let this sit for about 15, 20 minutes, just long enough to make the rice. And then everything is all heated through. And this has just the right amount of sweet and sour. We just love this. It is so delicious and yummy. You've got your peppers, onions pineapple chicken a little bit of everything on there and when i serve this i like to add a little bit of sesame seeds i love those and a little bit of green onions on here and it's just delish and that's it sweet and sour chicken isn't that hard the crock pot makes it just fabulous so bust it out and enjoy. Have a great day, everyone. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.